hello, I'm Hilary, Pastor Derek's wife, and we're speaking about the Holy Spirit. He's the third person of the Trinity. So let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. Um, and Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. John the Baptist said uh, in John 1, 33, I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of Matthew tells us a little bit more about the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so Jesus is baptized in the Holy Spirit uh, to empower him for his ministry. So since Jesus in, in his humanity, he was totally God and totally human. In his humanity, he needed the Holy Spirit to fulfill his ministry. How much more do we need the Holy Spirit to enable us to fulfill God's call on our life? Luke chapter 3 verse 22, And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon Jesus. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Luke 4, 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit um, at his water baptism. Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan for over a period of 40 days and nights. And... Um, then Jesus says in Luke 11, verse 13, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, and he will. He will. John 14, verse 16 through 18, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not behold him or know him. But you know him, because he abides with you and will be in you, inside you, in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you, I will send the Helper. Verse 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. That was fulfilled. The Holy Spirit brought to them, these men who, who wrote the Gospels, um, all that Jesus said, that Jesus wanted to be recorded. John 16, verse 7, Jesus says to his disciples, I mean, they are so distressed at being told he's leaving them. Um, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth because he, he'll not speak of his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will disclose to you what God has called you to do. Every one of us, even before... Um, we were completely formed in the womb as soon as we were uh, conceived. And I think even before that, God had a plan for your life. You are not a mistake. You are a plan of God. And he has a perfect will for you. And he has, when I say a ministry, not everyone will be behind the pulpit. But there is so much that we can do for the Lord. I know someone 
and she doesn't preach, but she goes on the streets and she tells everybody about the Lord Jesus Christ and brings people to receive Jesus. Wow, what a ministry. And then at work, you can be the, the light of the world in a dark place. And so Jesus tells them that it's an advantage that he goes away um, because if he doesn't, then the Holy Spirit cannot come. And I think here that we can remember the price that was paid for the Spirit of God to be poured out upon us because until Jesus had suffered on that horrendous cross, he was brutalized, he was tortured before he even got to the cross. His blood had to be spilt on the earth for our sake. Um, and so the Holy Spirit has come at a great, great price. Jesus says, um, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away because if I don't go away, if I don't suffer, the helper shall not come to you. But if I do go and I suffer, um, I will send him to you. Verse 14, he shall glorify me because he shall take of mine and will disclose it to you. You see, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And um, in Mark chapter 13, Jesus is telling them um, what they will be persecuted, we will be persecuted. He didn't pretend that everything was going to be you know, wonderful and a bed of flowers. He told them is this, that actually they, they would be persecuted and actually all the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, that they actually died for their faith. You see, it was necessary for them um, to be martyred uh, because I often wondered why, you know, what a, sh what a shame. That's my earthly thinking. But actually because they were martyred, people believed the words that they were saying because after all who would go through terrible terrible torturous deaths if they were telling a lie so they believed what they said and many many were brought to the Lord Jesus Christ through the martyrs um, who've, who've been martyred for the sake of the gospel and so the Holy Spirit is our teacher Mark chapter 13 verse 10 and the gospel must first be preached to all nations. But when they arrest you, he's saying they will, and when they deliver you up, and they will, don't worry beforehand or premeditate, try and think what you're going to say, but whatever is given you in that hour, speak that. Because it won't be you who speak, but the Holy Spirit who will be speaking through you. Luke chapter 12, verse 12, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. And the same can be for us. If we spend our first time of our day, that's the special time. Um, sheep, I understand, um, in uh, Jesus' day, and uh, they weren't in, in a nice little sheepfold and lots of green grass. I mean, they were in a barren land and they had to move from, from place to place the shepherd would lead them to still waters, to safe waters. But actually, I understand that um, in the morning, the dew could be really heavy, and that's the best water, as they would lick that up. That would refresh them. And so our morning time, the first hours of the day, the first minutes of the day, really should be to focus on the Lord. And I'm beginning to say, actually, good morning, dear Holy Spirit. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Good morning, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for bringing me safely through the day. And then just to give the best time of the day to him. He wants to fellowship with him, which is us, us speaking, but him speaking to us as well. And so the Holy Spirit, um, if you're in a situation uh, where you're in a very difficult spot or, or people are arguing with us, don't worry, just turn your heart towards the Holy Spirit and he will give you the words to say. And the Holy Spirit is the most important person on earth. He is very, very, very important. And sadly, so many of us have taken him for granted. And I think really what um, helped me, enabled me to start studying more about the Holy Spirit 
was that I, I met someone um, and they said, oh, you're one of those, you know, the Holy Spirit lot, the, the, the talkers in tongues. And actually, they go to church every single week. And so I was quite, quite shocked. Um, and I'm sure the person loves the Lord, but somehow the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues is uh, not much of a thing. But actually, so, so important for our lives. As we seek the Lord, as we pray in tongues, we can, we can pray for things that we don't know about. But anyway, what I'm saying is that not many of us really understand how vital the Holy Spirit is. Um, and he's so vital in our relationship with the Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Because um, number one, actually, he enables us to receive and fulfill the plan and purpose for our life. God will never ask us to do something that we know or think we can do ourselves. He's going to ask you to do something that you know, that you know, that you know, in your flesh you cannot do it. Number two, he is the wonderful comforter. You see, when we are in grief, not necessarily through the death of a loved one, but it can be when we are rejected by a loved one. Um, it can be all sorts of things that can cause us grief. The wonderful, wonderful Holy Spirit is our comforter. I remember um, uh, an account of a lovely couple who were missionaries um, and their son had gone out to be with them. And he went ahead, um, they, they were Americans, and um, they followed a, a few days later. The plane that they were in crashed. There were no survivors. That young man who was an only child, he'd lost his mother and his father. And he said that he was devastated, absolutely devastated by the news. But then he got by himself and he just prayed in tongues. He said, he didn't use these words, but this is mine. His mind had gone out to lunch and he, he just, was so confused, like, why, why, why? And he prayed in tongues and he prayed in tongues and he prayed in tongues, I think for an hour or two. But he said at the end of it, the peace of God. Obviously, he knew that he knew his parents were safe with his family, that God loved him. He had a purpose to fulfill and God would bring people to him who would love him and fellowship with him. And he said he never grieved after that because the power of the Holy Spirit who, who enabled him and comforted him was absolutely amazing. And I have experienced that myself. And I can tell you it is wonderful and I never ever want to forgive it. Forget it, I mean, sorry, not forgive it, forget it. Um, number three, the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to receive God's love. I remember when we were preparing to, to go to a country uh, where Christians are not welcome. And the people there, the wonderful Christians there, had actually organized us to do an outdoor um, services um, and to pray for the sick, which actually was really rather dangerous. But anyway, and we were going um, and the the people who'd come from that country and living in England were saying to us, don't do it, don't do it. I mean, this is incredibly dangerous. Do you not realize? And we thought, well, we're beginning to. And I remember I couldn't sleep. I was absolutely terrified. I'm not a very brave person. Um, and suddenly, I, when I say I heard the voice, it wasn't an audible voice, but it was like a voice inside me. The Spirit of God dwells inside us. And it said, this voice said, Hillary, if you knew how much I love you, you would never be afraid again. And actually the fear left. And we went, um, there was a death threat and we did have to hide in a car and keep changing cars, etc. But nobody actually killed us. They made a pot shot at the car that we'd been in um, before uh, 
we got after we got out and the bullet hole was this big I was absolutely amazed um, in the bumper and the boys said it was amazing because actually they were aiming for the windscreen those boys were kept safe god bless them they were in the, in their teens who were actually protecting us and number four the, the holy spirit is the one who strengthens us when we're weary um, when you're young, I, I think perhaps you don't really get weary, but the older you get, sometimes you think, I just feel so weary, I'm worn out, you can feel discouraged, and you think, I can't go another step, I'm, I'm done. Um, and I got to this some time ago, and actually I thought, I'm finished, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, and he's so kind, almost, uh, I would imagine, he's not a human being, but a twinkle in his eye with, with love in his voice. He said, I know you want to leave. I know you want to quit the ministry, but I won't let you. And you know, as he said, I won't let you. I just felt the power of the Holy Spirit rise up in me. I was in a meeting, a public meeting, and you don't sort of just collapse. And he just strengthened me and has continued all the time. Number five, he's the one who opens our heart to believe and receive God's amazing, extravagant, eternal love that heals the heart of the one who's been made to believe that they are useless. I'm not sure if I shared this with you before, but just once, um, this was a born again Christian and they were upset with me. And all I could say was, um, God loves me. And they said, no, he doesn't love you. He doesn't like you. He just forgives you. And do you know, I was, Devastate, and that's a lie, by the way. That's a downright lie. I, I mean, needless to say, I was speechless, and I did go home and I did cry a lot. But the Lord, the Lord comforted me, and we should never ever say that, because God loves us. If a regular shepherd loves his sheep. If he um, ministers healing, as it were, through medicine or whatever, to his sheep, how much more God loves us. We are his sheep. He loves us. It's unconditional love. And he will never, ever reject you. And he will never say to you, I don't love you, I don't like you. Never, 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 never. And so... God wants, the Holy Spirit is the one who fellowships with us. Um, I'm trying to think of a way of describing what fellowship is like. Imagine that you're with people, that you love them and they love you, and you're having a meal together and you're enjoying one another's company. And with us, we'd be sharing scripture and, and uh, we would laugh together and, and just love one another. The Holy Spirit is the one who fellowships with us and he wants to fellowship with you every single day. When you have that special time with the Lord, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and he will help you to hear the voice of the Lord. He will speak to you. He will encourage you. He will bless you. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You see, the Holy Spirit is here on earth to help us with our weaknesses, to help us to pray the Father's will into the earth. Um, and this is why it's such a huge benefit to be able to pray in tongues. And when we receive the baptism, the evidence of receiving the baptism, the Holy Spirit is praying in tongues. And it's so valuable. Have you ever come to pray for a situation in, in your life or that you hear on the news? Uh, for instance, the 
those darling, darling people in Afghanistan trying to get out. And we know that any one of them is known as a Christian. They will be beheaded, absolutely ruthlessly. So can you imagine what it's, it's like to be under that kind of pressure? And the kind of pressure when you've got something dreadful happening in your life. Words in your own language escape you. But the power of praying in tongues, because it's the Holy Spirit praying through you the perfect will of God for your situation. Or you can pray for people that you don't know. I mean, I don't know any of those people, but I am so grateful when the Holy Spirit takes hold of me together with me. We pray. I yield my tongue to the Holy Spirit. I pray in tongues. I do not know in knowledge way what I am praying. All I do know is that it's prayer that's interceding in behalf of these people. And then you come to a place where you, you know that you know um, you have the answer to the prayer. And so tongues is absolutely vital and so valuable. Um, and prayer with him can be the most wonderful time of our day. He will guide us each day um, and make it easy for us to uh, communicate with our Heavenly Father. Um, we should long for fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We should, I can't wait to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I really do believe it's absolutely vital. And I know that mothers, it must be extremely difficult when you've got young children and you've got all people about you. Um, but actually, we can find, if we ask the Lord, he will show us the place that we can go. I know uh, one, one lady who was a minister in the gospel, she said the only place that she could get away from, so forgive me, her husband, she didn't dislike her family, and the children and their demands was to go and sit in the car in the garage and pray. And I believe that when you ask the Lord, he will give you that trysting place with the Lord. I love that word, trysting. Um, two lovers tryst, they, they get together. You love the Lord, he loves you. And you've got this personal intimate time. God knows you personally. Um, it's not like um, maybe somebody's got 15, in the old days they used to have 15 children. Uh, I think it was John Wycliffe, his mother had about 15 children. Um, and she had, the only place she had was the kitchen where they all were as well anyway. And she taught them the gospel. She would actually, we wore pinafores. Some of you don't even know what a pinafore is, but it's something you put in front of you so you don't get dirty. And she would put it over her head. And every child, even the youngest knew, you don't talk to mama. She is speaking with God. She is listening to God. We do not disturb her. And then when the pinafore was off, um, then they could talk to mum. But when you think that um, John Wesley, uh, he brought so many people to the Lord, traveling on that horse, on horseback, for years and years and years. And when he started, it was rough. I mean, people would set dogs on him. Um, I remember he was thrown out of the church that he belonged to uh, whilst he was preaching. And so he finished, he finished the sermon standing on his father's gravestone. Um, she, she had wonderful children because she had a very personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is here to help us pray Father's will into the earth. He's your personal friend. He's my personal friend. He's, he's my very best friend. And he wants to be your very best friend too. Um, and prayer with him, as I said, can be the most wonderful time of day. Um, and for me, I realized that the, the calling on my life actually is to pray and intercede. And when the Holy Spirit takes hold of together with me against something that's coming against somebody, and I just pray in tongues and pray in tongues and pray in tongues. I find that so fulfilling. I really do. That, that's my most favorite time when the Holy Spirit does that with me. And we should, as I said, long for fellowship with him. We should want to get to that precious place that we have to be with him. 
our Christian life is a, is a journey with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has been working upon me, showing things that are wrong with me. When I say wrong with me, things that maybe are idols. And I realized I was the biggest idol in my life because I was incredibly selfish. And he's working on that. And so our fellowship with the Holy Spirit shouldn't be full of fellowship. I can't say a word, selfish requests. Um, it's when we're with him, it's, it's friendship, it's love. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. Gratitude, oh, Father God, I'm so grateful for, for you, that you were in my life. And communion, allowing him to speak to you. And being quiet, and I say, Lord, please, 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 I have all these words to spend. Help me to be quiet in your presence. Even if I don't hear you speak a word in my heart, just to be quiet. And he will teach us to wait for him before we launch into prayer. And I promise you that when we spent time waiting on him and saying, beloved Holy Spirit, would you now come and help me to pray the Father's will? And after that, I find that most helpful to pray in tongues. Just leave you with this last scripture. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses because we just don't know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And Father, I thank you for your wonderful Holy Spirit. I ask you to reveal your precious Holy Spirit to all those who have been listening to me in Jesus' name. We're looking at the foundations, how important it is to have the right foundation in your Christian life. And this series covers a lot of key issues like creation, evolution, the authority of the believer, what it means to be a disciple, uh, what the gospel really is, uh, the Jubilee and uh, some other fascinating stuff that I believe will, will deeply enrich your life. Thank you for watching. Join with us at Oxford Bible Church every Sunday at 11am Greenwich Mean Time for our live stream service. Or join us at Cheney School, Headington, Oxford, ox 37 qh you can watch more of our teachings on our Roku channel and Derek Walker's YouTube channel. All Derek Walker's books are available in printed and Kindle versions in all Amazons worldwide or online with other great products, where you can also support our programs at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086.